So I, like many parents, I imagine, of a seven-year-old or somewhere in that range, is going through a similar thing where it feels like you spend more time correcting, uh, disciplining, sometimes yelling at your kids than you do otherwise. Um, and I'm kind of in that, that phase right now where it feels like that. And, you know, naturally as somebody who tries to question and, um, you know, not assume that the way I'm handling it is the right way, I, I think about that stuff a lot. And I think about, you know, am I doing that too much? What's the right balance? What's the impact that might be having on him and his self-confidence and his development, etc.? And also, naturally, I, I think of a lot of things through the, the frameworks and the concepts that I talk about in these videos. So what I, what I started to think about with my son and all that, that correcting and disciplining and all that is that um, what, what I think in many ways, what, what it is, is if you think of the concept that I talk of or speak of, which is that every one of us has this um, pleasure versus discomfort kind of meter, this gauge. And in many ways, it's what our subconscious is managing at all times. Um, when it comes to raising a kid, particularly in the elementary school years, um, what you're doing is you're trying to calibrate that meter. Um, you know, instinctually, I think our subconscious has a sense of what brings us pleasure and what brings us discomfort, um, from like a very natural perspective. But as you get acclimated into society and civilization and, you know, school and, and social situations, etc., um, you need to calibrate that meter. Right. You can imagine, you know, for, for, for a kid, um, there might be an inclination to want to eat. So if, if you get some discomfort because you're hungry and you want to eat and you want that pleasure, your inclination is just to respond to that and go eat. Right. And if you wanted to do that in school, you, you can't. Right. There's a certain time in which you eat. You have to raise your hand. You have to ask permission. And there's all these things. And you could think of a thousand <clears throat> other scenarios in which that happens. So what you're trying to do ultimately is calibrate that meter geared around society. Right. And for a kid, and again, another example is if they uh, are rude or disrespectful to a grandparent, um, you want to calibrate that. They, they don't they don't inherently naturally get discomfort from that. If their grandparent tells them to zipper up their jacket and they don't want to, um, it doesn't there's no discomfort necessarily that comes with saying, like, shut up or leave me alone. Right. At, at an extreme or somewhat of an extreme. So what we're doing as parents is we're trying to calibrate that. We're trying to instill discomfort. We're trying to teach you that, hey, if you do that certain thing, you're going to get discomfort. So train your subconscious to understand as you're managing that meter what actions, what activities, what behaviors are going to result in discomfort. So that when you're running that calculation, you say, hey, I better not say something rude. I better not tell my grandmother to shut up because that's going to bring a bunch of discomfort. Even if her telling me to zip my jacket is bringing some discomfort, right? I don't want to hear that. I don't want to do that. So I want to stop it. And I'm going to do it the simplest, easiest way possible. I'm going to tell her to shut up. My parents, by yelling at me, by giving me a timeout, by punishing me, whatever, they're now instilling some discomfort on that end of it when I say shut up, right? So now it's calibrating that meter to understand that. And I think, again, in many ways, all of this yelling, all of this, you know, correcting and disciplining is very much that, if you think about it conceptually. We're trying to teach them right from wrong. But I think it's interesting to look at it from that slightly, you know, turned lens. Um, we all have our own perception of what right and wrong is. We all have our own values. Um, hopefully they overlap, you know, pretty well with society. But that's more of a subjective thing. Um, and we need to figure that out and we need to teach our kids that based on what we think is right. But I think by looking at it through the lens of that pleasure discomfort meter, which takes it a step up, right? It brings it a level up. It's a little bit more generic. It at least helps us to understand what we're trying to do and how best to do it. Um, we need to think of it in those terms. And, and, you know, this isn't necessarily novel. It's just another lens or another way of looking at it, right? There's, there's positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement. Same concept, right? You want to have negative reinforcement to teach them that, hey, there's going to be discomfort here if you do that. And if you do the right thing, we'll give you some positive reinforcement. That brings more pleasure. So I think that those terms and those concepts are there. But I think, as I always say, if we can get to kind of the first principles, base level understanding of what's really happening, um, really at its base form, our drive is, is pleasure and discomfort. It helps us to understand that a little bit better, particularly when we think about it through the lens of the subconscious and how that's dictating and driving a lot of it and how we're kind of speaking to that and trying to calibrate that in many ways. So just an interesting kind of application, if you will, from a parenting perspective of how some of these concepts come to life.